Good morning, New Life family. So good to be with you and sad to not be actually with you. This is the second time that I've been able to do a live stream and I can tell you with certainty that this is not the same as seeing you in person and seeing all your smiling faces, getting your hugs and being with one another to encourage one another. And yet I'm thankful that we can be together this way and share the word together and experience the life of Jesus as we press on to know him more together. For a meeting for the first time, my name is John Matthew Goodwin, and I am a longtime friend of Pastor Ross. Yeah, more than a decade, I think he said, which is crazy to think how time goes. And you may have seen my wife Kim and I in the worship videos that we've been sending your way in the last little bit. Glad that we've been able to connect that way as well. Uh, if you saw the first one, you know that we have a few kids that uh, we're trying to keep off the internet, but they all say hello. Kim says hello, and we're thankful to be here with you this morning and to have this opportunity to share. Pastor Ross said that I have recently started working for an organization called Worship With Us, and it's been a fun adventure. It's been a good journey. I started working with Worship With Us in January after 10 years of being a pastor at a church in Stratford, and so this is a fairly new kind of experience, a new kind of endeavor, and, uh, and yet it's familiar because uh, Worship With Us is an organization that my parents founded about 20 years ago, and so uh, I've been watching the journey and I've been privileged to be part of the adventure with them over the years as well. Currently, they're based in St. Mary's, and so that's where I'm doing a lot of my work these days between Stratford and St. Mary's. And Worship With Us is all about creating opportunities for people to experience and encounter Jesus. And so we do that through leading worship and hosting worship events. We do a lot of itinerant preaching and teaching. We hold in-house seminars and conferences for teaching and equipping the saints for good works of service. We do prayer ministry and a host of other things that uh, we trust bring people into the presence of Jesus and bring them some kind of encounter so that they can be changed by him. It's a missions organization, and so Worship With Us does work in Ontario, but we also do work in Eastern Europe in the country of Bulgaria. We've been privileged to do ministry in England. We've had a chance to do ministry in Romania. And there are other places that we would love to go as well because we believe that Jesus is the answer and we believe that he is the source of life. And so we're excited to share the good news wherever we can. And we're excited to see people come into the kingdom to receive the gift of salvation, to receive the gift of life, and then to be prepared for works of service, like Ephesians says, the works that God prepared for them in advance. We want people to be established in truth. And so we're going to go to the Word today and see if uh, God has something for us. I trust that He does, and I trust that this is going to be an encouraging and uh, a useful time for us. This is a new endeavor, and I'm thankful for the support of New Life. You've been very gracious and very kind to us, and we, uh, we're really thankful for the quickness that you showed in getting on board and supporting us in this kingdom adventure. We're glad to be partnered with you, and we're thankful for your support. Uh, if you would like to connect with us, we would love to connect with you as well. You can find us on the internet at www.worshipwithus.ca. You can connect with me directly and find out some of the things that I've got going on at www.johnmatthew.ca. And we've been releasing a lot of music and a lot of worship uh, kinds of videos lately so that we can try and help resource the church. If you want to check those out, we're on YouTube. We don't have enough subscribers yet to have our own YouTube link our own youtube name so you're gonna have to search worship with us but we do come up we're there when you search worship with us on youtube and we'd love for you to check that out as well it's been a bit of a journey leaving elgin missionary church after a decade of ministry heading into this new adventure with worship with us leaving 2019 behind heading into 2020 and god was really pressing some things on me as we walked through those steps of leaving a church and leaving our family there and starting this new adventure that he had very clearly called us to. And so I'm going to share some thoughts with you that he had been sharing with me and that I really believe he's uh, sharing for the church now as well, that it's not just something for me and my heart, for me and my family, but for the church universal. Uh, I'm glad that we get to share the journey together and that we get to adventure and experience Jesus together. 
And so as I stepped into 2020, the word that kept coming to mind was the word ambassador. And I had to mull it over for a little bit and I thought about it for weeks and weeks and eventually I decided I should get out my dictionary and see, okay, what is it that this actually means? I think I have a pretty good idea, but let's get right down to the nitty, get, nitty gritty. And I discovered that an ambassador is a representative of somebody else. They're somebody who has authority and not just their own authority, but they actually carry the authority of another person who has real authority. An ambassador is somebody who brings change and who influences the places where they're working and they work on behalf of that other person who has great authority. But as I really got into it and I kept working it through with God, I discovered, again, rediscovered 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 21. We're going to read that together. I love this passage because it speaks to me about who I am and about who God is. In fact, we love it so much we're thinking about starting a podcast surrounding or based on these verses. But let's read this together. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they're a brand new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. There's that word, ambassadors for Christ. As though God were making an appeal through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. It's an amazing, amazing passage. And like I said, it speaks to me about two main things that are really important in fact, I've had the opportunity to share about these things a lot in the last decade. The two big things that affect life more than anything else, your concept of God and your understanding of your identity. Who is God and what's he like? What are his intentions towards you? What does he think about you? How does he respond to you? Is God distant? Is he spiteful? Is he angry? I hope that your answer is no. And who am I? Particularly, who am I because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross? What is my identity in him? What is my position and my standing in him? But there are days, aren't there, where you feel broken or you feel dirty, you feel beyond hope, beyond grace, unable to be redeemed. And so it's important that we take God at his word and we discover who we are, that we read through the Bible and find out his heart for us and find out what he says about who we are. Because if we answer yes to those questions, is God distant? Is God angry? Is God spiteful? Am I broken? Am I dirty? Am I beyond hope? Then we begin to live distant from him. We begin to live in fear of who we might become and how he might punish us. We live in defeat. We live in pain. And we miss out on the relationship that he so lovingly offers to us and that he so badly wants to have with us. He's a good father. This morning, talking about ambassadors, we're going to focus on the part of the questions, who am I? This is one of the things that I've been thinking in the last number of months, and particularly in the last couple of weeks, is this idea that identity often leads to destiny. That is, that God has prepared something for us to do, but it comes out of knowing who we are and knowing his strength and power at work in us. And so we need to know who we are so that we can get to the things that he's called us to do. And so even just looking at these verses, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 21, we find out some things about us. We find out that I'm in Christ because I place my faith in him. That's a really safe place to be. It means that you're hidden away in him, that you are secure and that you are held close and that nothing can take you away from his presence. You're in him says in those verses that you are brand new. It's not just a remodel of something that was starting to fall apart. Like the old hymn says, my sins not in part but the whole, they've been taken away. The old identity that was so broken 
has been taken away, and the new has come. The old is gone, and the new has come. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So the old is gone, and the new has come. We've been raised to brand new life in him. Hey, new life, that's a good name for a church probably. Who are you? These verses are amazing for telling us that we are the people who have been reconciled to God. We've been brought back into relationship with him. I had to go and look what that word reconciled really means. And when I got into the dictionary again, it says it means that we've been brought into harmony, which is a, an interesting kind of way to put it. We're in harmony with God. It's a beautiful sound. Further definition means that we've been made compatible. There was a time when we were enemies of God, that we were deserving of wrath, and by default, that was our position, that we were at odds with him and we were incompatible with him. But now, because of Jesus' work on the cross, because of his resurrection life and power, because of us placing our faith in him, we're compatible with him and we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And that means that the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is at work in us right now. We're compatible with him. In fact, verse 21 says that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's amazing. And that's the truth. And so whether you feel it or not, you can take God at his word and know who you are and know that out of that identity, there is a destiny for you. Identity often leads to destiny. But this is who we are because of Jesus. And because that's true, we're empowered and we're sent to have a kingdom impact. Word says that we are ambassadors. That means we're his representatives in the earth. We have the opportunity to carry his life and his power, his presence, his grace into the world around us. God reconciled and redeemed us so that we can take his generous offer to the world. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. I was thinking about what that looks like. I'm always amazed at the lengths that God will go to to save people and redeem people. As I stepped into this role with worship with us and was reflecting on the past 20 years that worship with us has history, I was thinking about the very first overseas missions trip that the ministry took. It took a team of about seven people and we went to Bulgaria and it was foreign for so many of us. It's a totally different kind of place from Canada. And we were traveling from one end of the country to the other end of the country and on the way, the bus broke down. And we didn't know why. It just kind of stopped and sputtered and pulled over to the side of the road and our bus driver got off the bus and started to look at the engine and the team who thought they knew something about auto repairs got off the bus and started to look at the engine. There was nothing physically wrong that we could see with the bus. We couldn't figure out why the bus had stopped and we couldn't get it going again. And so we stopped and we prayed. We realized that we had just passed this village about three minutes ago and we were still within walking distance. And so we decided that we were going to go back and see what God had for us in that place. Beautiful little town called Gabrovo. And so our translator started knocking on doors and inviting people out, and we hauled drums and guitars and equipment down into the square in this little town. And we had an impromptu concert and shared the gospel with people. We got to share some testimony, and we even got to pray for some people. And there was a real receptiveness to the gospel as we decided to take that step away from the bus trying to get to our next location and to see what God had for us right there in that moment. The whole town came out. I don't think there was an empty house in the village and so there were probably 35 or 40 people gathered around and they listened and we engaged with them and somebody even brought out a box of chocolate cookies at the end and we got to share fellowship with one another. And as soon as we packed up, the bus started. Of course, 
God was trying to get our attention, and he clearly had something in mind for us. As we were traveling around being ambassadors for God, he wanted the people in Gabravo to know his presence, to know his love, to know his kindness, and to know that he was with them, that he was thinking about them. It's kind of an amazing story to me when I think about it. But God wants to save the world through us. God wants to use us as his representatives to bring his life and his grace and his power to people. And so I shouldn't be shocked, maybe, at the lengths he'll go to. I wonder what kinds of opportunities God's putting in front of you. God wants to save the world through us. And so my encouragement to you is just this. Live like who you are. Know your identity in him and then live it out. And not just kind of a passive remembering every now and again, but intentionally with faith at the forefront, waking up in the morning going, I'm a child of God. I'm redeemed. I'm saved. I'm his ambassador. I wonder what kind of adventures we're going on today. Live like who you are, holding on to the truth that we are changed, that we are brand new, and that we've been recreated in him. Live like who you are in his power and in his strength. I know the Pastor Ross referenced 1 Peter 4, 11, I think it was last week. 1 Peter 4, 11 says, Speak as one who is speaking the very words of God. Serve as if God is the one giving you the strength to serve. It's not just a good idea. That's our model for life. It's a life of faith. Live like who you are. I wonder... When people meet us, when they talk with us, when we're engaged in conversation with people and we spend time with people, do they see Jesus in us? Do they see him and hear him and smell him and glimpse him in us and through us? I hope that they do. Are we intentional about carrying Jesus into our situations or our interactions the things that we do at home, the things that we do with our coworkers, when we get into play, maybe we haven't been able to do a lot of play because we've been stuck at home because of COVID-19 lately. But when we're interacting with people, are we intentionally showing off Jesus and allowing him to work his life through us? We represent God in all those places. We're his ambassadors. Do we extend grace and invite others to be reconciled to the Father? This is God's commission to us. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. He wants to have a kingdom impact through us. There's another way to think about that. Not just to have a kingdom impact, but to be kingdom motivated. God's looking for people who are kingdom focused and kingdom minded people. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. We read these words here. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Seek first his kingdom before anything else, before your physical needs, before material things, before your self-preservation. In the context of these verses, it's talking about food, it's talking about clothing, it's talking about shelter. It's really easy to be driven by comfort and by security and by material things. And by extension, kind of a natural extension, it's really easy to be driven by and to want to hold on to reputation and status, stuff. And the things that those things afford us, popularity and fame, not that there's anything inherently wrong with food and clothes, shelter, wanting to have that sense of security. I think it's good to be clothed. Probably you're thankful that we're clothed. I'm clothed right now. Amen. Thank you. But God says don't chase these things. God says that the, the pagans chase after these things, but God knows that you need them. There's nothing wrong with them, but God is going to take care of you. And he wants us to seek first his kingdom. See, misfocus has a cost. Being focused on the wrong thing has a 
cost to it. And when we chase those things instead of the kingdom, it comes at the expense of the kingdom. And so God's looking for people who will be kingdom-minded and kingdom-focused. That's who I want to be. That's who God wants us to be. There's another verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. It says this, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? You have been bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Don't you know that you're not your own anymore? Don't you know that the Holy Spirit, God, lives in you and dwells in you? This is an invitation to live by the power of the Holy Spirit instead of relying on our flesh, relying on our own resources, relying on our own seemingly good ideas, relying on our old habits. Instead, to recognize and acknowledge and believe that the Holy Spirit, the promise that God gave to us that he would send the Holy Spirit is at work in us, that he lives through us, that he wants to bless and touch and impact the world through us. And so we're not our own. We've been bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. And so instead of living for ourselves, we live for his desire, we live for his purpose, we live for his kingdom. When we're kingdom motivated, when we're kingdom focused, God can use us to have kingdom impact in the world. I want to give you just a quick glimpse of what that looks like. In Isaiah chapter 61, we read these words, 61 verses 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. He sent me to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his glory and splendor. This is what it can look like Good news, salvation and life, healing for people who are broken, freedom for people who are in bondage, light for people who are in darkness, favor and comfort instead of wrath and punishment, beauty and joy and praise instead of despair. And it's all for his glory. He said that we are like trees of righteousness planted, established, rooted, in who he is, for his own glory and splendor. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus picked up the scroll, and we read in verses 17 to 21 that he read those exact words from Isaiah 61. And when he had finished reading, he sat down and he said, I'm the fulfillment of this prophecy. The Lord sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim release to captives and to bring the favor of the Lord. He was the fulfillment of all those words and that same Jesus lives in you. That same Jesus who was the fulfillment of that prophecy to bring such drastic change works and lives in you. And he's looking to bring the same effect through you that people will be set free and that people will be brought into the kingdom. That's a privilege that we have because of who we are as his ambassadors who have been recreated, who have been totally changed and transformed on the inside. And so as we close, this is my encouragement to you today. Again, just live like who you are. Live like who he's made you to be. 
live out of his grace and his strength because you are holy and you're righteous and you're good. We're his ambassadors and we're on a mission to see him glorified in the earth, to carry the good news of who he is and what he's done for us to people everywhere. I often use this phrase, bring people to God and bring God to people. We want to see God's kingdom established and expanded as we trust him and as we allow him to minister through us. I hope that you'll take him up on the offer. I hope that you'll take him at his word about who you are and that you will see his kingdom established and his kingdom expanding as you take those steps of faith to be his ambassador. Thanks again so much for having us today. It's a real privilege to be in partnership with you. And we love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. I'd love to pray for you. Father, you're so good to us. And this amazing thing that you've done where you give the penalty to Jesus and you give the freedom to us and you recreate us and you transform us because of his work, it's overwhelming. And it's true. And so today we choose to believe you. We choose to receive that truth. And Jesus, we believe that because you've changed us, we have a new destiny. And that out of our identity, we can do the good works that you prepared for us a long, long time ago. I pray that we would have our eyes open to what those things are. That it doesn't necessarily mean going around the world, but that in our day-to-day -day interactions, in our day-to-day -day engagements, in our coming and our going, in our houses and our families, at our work, all of these things provide the opportunity for you to work and minister through us. And so I pray that we would trust you and that we would see the things that you're looking to do through us as your ambassadors and that you would be glorified in the earth that you would bring souls into your kingdom. We bless you, Jesus, because you are so faithful and so good, and we love you. And it's in your beautiful name we pray. Amen.